Hi everyone, it's Rob Watson, the module leader for Tech 1502, uh, Introduction to Community Media. Um, this is a brief overview of what we'll be covering in the lecture, the eighth lecture uh, of our lecture series. Uh, and the, uh, the title for this week's lecture is Community Identity. And what I want to cover are some of the key issues, uh, some, of the, some of the kind of background issues, if you like, that are associated with uh, how we develop uh, and how we incorporate a sense of identity within our community life. Uh, so I've put, uh, I've put together some slides, uh, and I don't share the slides, but I do share the notes, and these are available on the DMU Commons Wiki uh, for you to pick up and read, download and read. Uh, so if you go to wiki.our.dmu.ac.uk, and if you look for the Tech 1502 page, and if you go to the workshop notes, sorry, the lecture notes section, you'll see that there's a, a, a link to a downloadable PDF document, so you can read the notes in advance. Any of the diagrams, any of the quotes I use, any of the background quotes that I'm, I'm working from with this lecture, they're, they're in the notes as well. Uh, so it'll give you an indication of kind of other reading that you might want to do uh, and that you might want to take on board. <clears throat> so the kind of thing that I want to kind of give an overview of is the way that um, on the one hand we can often essentialize our sense of uh, identity so it's kind of it's inherent within us we are uh, I am if you like a a white male uh, from uh, the United Kingdom and I live at a certain time and therefore my sense of identity is prescribed by those conditions or we can look at it another way and we can say that our identities are built through relationships and our interactions. So on the one hand, I'm a Harry Potter fan or, I'm, you know, and I, or I like a particular football club uh, or I like a particular form of music. So it's a kind of mediated sense of identity which doesn't have to have the kind of, if you like, the, the groundings, the, uh, the, the, the structure that's built into it that determines who we are and what we do it kind of comes through from our social interactions so it's a way of thinking about identity and who we are in in more fluid terms so that we can kind of maybe be more flexible and come at things from different different directions and in the process of thinking how identity and how communities operate um, hopefully we'll come up with a kind of picture that uh, that accounts for change that allows and understands uh, things that change like technology or uh, economic relationships change or social expectations change, communication technologies and expectations change. And all of these have a change, uh, have, a, have an impact on the way that we think about who we are and particularly kind of where we think we belong. Underpinning this is the idea that uh, our, our stronger sense of identity is is fueled if you like from the sense that we belong to something or we uh, belong somewhere or we belong as a, as the person that we are or the person that we want to be unfortunately we're also kind of living in a world which i think is uh, is becoming more compartmentalized and more segregated and we're going to look at the idea of how compartmentalization and segregation kind of has uh, is starting to impact or has impacted on on people's ability to construct uh, and to participate in and um, use their sense of uh, identity as it's founded in the communities that they're part of. Um, so the kind of idea of diversity and inclusivity, uh, which is common to thinking about issues about identity, is something which is contested. It's a word that you'll hear a lot in these uh, lectures, that the ideas aren't fixed, is that there's debates that take place about them and different people have different reasons for arguing about identity in different ways. Some might be conservative about their sense of identity. Some might be progressive about their sense of identity. Uh, how does that turn into a politics, if you like, of identity and social identity? How does that tie in with our economic uh, needs and our physical and practical abilities to sustain ourselves? So we're going to look at identity in a kind of quite a fairly broad way. And one of the things we'll look at is the way that uh, identities can also be spread out because we live in a globalised age uh, and there's a, a, a sense that people move around the world now and we'll look at the concept of the diaspora which brings together lots of different people from uh, a maybe a mythical origination point 
but then you kind of you're, you're part of a an internationalized globalized uh, community identity of what it means to be British or Indian or Australian or American and that you know it's spread around the world and how is that how is that played out uh, we'll also look at the idea that there are some people who are marginalized from being able to claim and, and, and have a sense of entitlement about their identity because they live in precarious uh, social conditions. So th we'll look at some examples of how homelessness, uh, homelessness is kind of articulated in media as something which is kind of at the edges, at the margins, and in part it's driven by uh, the lack of uh, entitlement to a sense of secure and fixed identity as well as the kind of practical objectives of having a secure place to live, there's also a sense of kind of you, f you, you um, socially as an idea, you stop existing as a person and you become something which is what we might call other. You become a non-person. Uh, so we'll look at some of the, the, the contentions around that as well. So the phrase otherness crops up, uh, which is an important distinction about how we figure out who we are because often we define ourselves in relation to the other. So, as I say, the notes are up on, on the wiki. Uh, if you want to do some reading, uh, there's the uh, uh, chapter 7 about self-representation in the Ellie Rennie book. Uh, there's also, I put a link to a programme on the box of broadcasts uh, so that you can watch it. It's the, uh, the People's History of Pop. And it's number three, and I thought it would be a good one to look at in terms of pop identities, how Britain was in, in the 70s and 80s was particularly kind of, if you like, tribal identities that emerged and undercut or, or cross-cut uh, traditional forms of identity in kind of British mainstream culture. And pop music was a vehicle for driving social change and a change in people's expectations about what they could be and, and where and how they belonged. Uh, so it's a good programme to have a look at. Uh, the details are up on the wiki and I will see you at the lecture on Tuesday morning.